The opinions, viewpoints, and beliefs presented on this program do not necessarily reflect those of the management, the affiliates, and broadcast partners, or the sponsors. Listener discretion is advised. Scarefest! And hello everyone and welcome to Scarefest Radio. Original broadcast day is March 2nd, 2018. Tonight we have we have a train wreck in the making, I guarantee it. We have the boys and the lady from Bonehead Humor. We'll be talking to Joe Lewis, Chad Jennings, James Thomas, and Haley Sawyers tonight. My co-host is Cody Chris Sutton, and of course, Cody Chris Sutton is a proud sponsor of Scarefest Radio, bringing light to the darkest places, CodyChris.com. And it's sponsored by Spirit Mechanics, Spirit Mechanics for your spiritual health and well-being. Find them on Facebook, M-E-C-H-A-N-I-X, Spirit Mechanics. Uh, don't forget the Mineral Springs Paranormal Investigation with Elizabeth Saint of Ghost of Shepherdstown. Coming up in Alton, Illinois, March 22nd. Go to coyotechrisnow.com. And while we're at it, let's talk about kyhorse.com because you know your mom wants something made out of leather for Mother's Day. Um, some reminders. Vendors. March, if you're thinking about being a vendor for the Scarefest, First deadline coming up is March 31st. If um, that's to get on the website as a normal vendor in our vendor guide. Now, once you go uh, start throwing money around, you know, uh, featured vendor and all that, then you, we'll take care of you. But if you want the freebie, if you want the freebie, uh, your deadline is this month. We are um, still taking speaker applications. And, and, Chris, I've got the early approved speaker list. Oh, guess what names are curiously absent from that list? <laughs> you and I, and everyone, mate. It's 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 it basically it's everybody's been on Scarefest Radio as a speaker, pretty much. Um, oh, wow. okay. So, uh, but yes, Chris and I. See, so that's a, I'm telling you, Chris. Knowing me is a is a it's a weight around your neck when it comes to Scarefest. <laughs> that is just I I, I am. I am there the is no, way. there is no way they can say no to us. I mean, <laughs> the power of our of our duo is just going to overwhelm everything. I uh, I went ahead today since uh since that one the one that you and I do together hadn't been approved yet. I went ahead and sent in my really bad tarot gallery application just to uh, see what sticks. Um, Lexington Comic Con, yeah. Lexington it's Comic and Toy Con. To stay away from um, copyright <laughs> issues. Um, 9th through 11th, don't forget, Scarefest will have a booth. And depending on how the text I have going with Amber, I might be there Saturday. Uh, she just texted me and said, do you really want to come? Which is um, Scarefest talk for, oh my God, we realize we don't have enough passes for everybody. And so they're asking me if they, if, if I, and I, it's it's a big crowd. I don't care if I go or not. I, it's, it's work. See, they do you want to work the Scarefest booth? Keyword being work. So, um, there's the announcement. I made it through the theme music with fairly good timing. Welcome to the show, Bonehead Humor people. What up? Hello. Woo. So, um, this all starts. Okay. <laughs> now, they, they, they got booked on the show under the auspices of, um, uh, seminar moderators uh do all of you all do that other than well i don't guess Haley does but uh because she's a behind the scenes type lady are all are the other three of you actively involved in moderating anything well two yeah. of us are okay uh, Je- i'm sorry i don't uh, i'll go ahead and say yes i moderate for comic-con and scare i i just moderate for scare fest that's enough for me asking good enough you know. good enough and Chad helps the rooms with both of yeah. us. He'll run the mic, and he basically holds my hand to make sure that I don't get scared. Haley uh, did the audio last year for Scarefest in the room. 
Well, all there the you go. Yeah. yeah. You. <laughs> so, but I, I, when you, when they said bonehead, and this is going to be really kind of sincere for a second, I didn't tell her, but I mean, when we get asked to do these things, like we so often do, <laughs> <laughs> usually we ask not to. Yeah. We have to do these things because the three of us are always in front of the camera. And we feel like we're you know, the fourth and the fourth one is a writer. Does a fantastic job. Does Haley? Okay, you're for the record. You're right. You, the the audio just went totally to shit. Um, <laughs> so you didn't but, hear a word I said about Haley. No, no. Chad, but, but I. But <laughs> but those of those of us watching on video could tell the way the way you were motioning towards her that you had glowing praise for her. <laughs> well, basically, that's what I wanted to say. I'll Listen say it up. one more time: is that Haley never gets enough credit. She's our producer director. The show wouldn't look as good as it does. It would sound as good as it does, and wouldn't be as good as it is without her. And I just always, when you said, "Oh, we want the boneheads," I was like, "Well, there's four of us, and she really needed to come on and get some attention." So, Fair enough. Hey, Fair enough. Um, now no. get off the camera. Yeah, get the hell out. Nobody wants to go around. <laughs> <laughs> Son of now, a bitch! You give her one little inch, and she takes a freaking mile. Well, I mean, maybe old princess. Uh, <laughs> I'm just going to throw it out there, uh, gentlemen. A little, a little, um, a little estrogen would not be bad for the show. I, know, I, I totally know. agree. I mean, I have boobs, but I don't have the estrogen. <laughs> Spe- yes. Speaking of you, yes. Joe, um, yes. Joe, have, have you ever given much thought to like wearing pants during the episodes? <laughs> yeah. We've asked that same question many, many times. times. Many times. We've had our attorneys ask that question. We, uh, seriously, and I don't even wear socks. If you ever notice, every once in a while, my, my Hobbit club foot will come into a shot. <laughs> and I'll just get bored, and you'll be like, no, tell us about your movie. <laughs> I want to hear about your movie. There's children watching you. Yeah. Lots of outtakes. Lots of outtakes. No, I don't, uh, I don't usually wear pants. No, I you like pants, Wes. <laughs> Well, the thing is, I'm try- I've am i been trying to work it through in my mind how anybody that wears shorts so much can have such white legs. <laughs> because I never get to wear them outside of this damn basement that we're in right now. <laughs> okay, okay. I, I, actually, we all, oddly enough, we all have those professional jobs where most, uh, everyone around here is wearing dress slacks every day, so it's... <laughs> It's it's entertaining to come home and actually take off my pants. You're lucky I put on the black shorts. Entertaining? <laughs> Want to go entertaining when you're not wearing pants? I love to entertain when I'm not wearing pants. I've heard well, the reviews aren't that good. Yeah. Oh well, I'm always coming up short. Now, uh, okay, we we've had some frivolity. <laughs> One of y'all actually tell the the viewers and the listeners. What bonehead humor, which I understand, of course, there's the YouTube channel, which I did watch some video today and yesterday. Um, and then I guess you all also do uh, a audio version of it to put out on iTunes. So uh, tell everybody what you try to accomplish with your show, Bonehead Humor. Uh, oh, well, I'll, James, you go first. Okay, well, no, what, what Bonehead me. Humor really started as... Um, just being honest, we had made some short films that nobody cared about. Uh, and we had had an idea of doing ske- uh, comedy sketches and stuff like that. Uh, but we all like horror. We like a lot of movies. We like all this stuff. Science fiction, television, writing, um, all arts, that stuff. Yeah. Music, so, just like anybody else, we're just nerds. And it ended up happening that Joe was actually moderating. And what was the number one question you got, Joe, when well, you were moderating? Well, James is leaving out part of the story. So Chad, for for a long time, tried to get us to do a podcast, and I didn't want to do the work <laughs> that we met. And then I knew Haley for a long time. Haley graduated college, and one of Haley's many degrees, she graduated with like four bachelor's degrees, is one of them is a communication podcast. More and degrees than a thermometer. She has more degrees than a thermometer. And Christy, my wife, had also one of podcast, too, brought it up, and I kept putting it off and at last year at Comic Con I think I did a really good job and on the second day and this is one compliment I give myself on the second day at the end of it people started saying because they went to the same panel for two days, Well what's your Twitter handle? What's your podcast? I, was like, I don't know. I don't know. I didn't I wasn't even announcing who I was because I, I really think moderating 
is basically <laughs> we were having a very conversation before the folks tuned in about four stars and Chris was talking about all the ones he's known. And it's kind of like fluffing in the sense of you get the crowd going a little bit before the star gets out there. You talk a little bit, you make them laugh, and then you shut up. You ask a question or two and you let the audience take over. Does that make sense to you all? Because no one comes to see me. No one comes to see Jane. No, I, that, no, that makes perfect sense. So The so, shitty moderators are the ones that won't shut up. So basically you're telling us that the reason you did the, decided to do the uh, podcast and videos because you weren't getting enough attention yeah, when, you did, yeah. when you did your job correctly. Yeah, basically. I think, I mean, it was, yeah, I mean, that's a funny way to put it. <laughs> but we had, we've, we've done several short films, and you can go to Bonehead Humor on YouTube and watch those, or, or at least one of them. You can watch Murder Virgin, Murder Virgin, check it out. And we didn't really have a lot of success. I mean, there's a lot of voices out there, and they're all screaming at the top of their lungs. And you got to scream a little bit louder than everybody else. you got to be a little bit more obnoxious. You know this, Wes. You know oh, this. Oh, believe me. Right? Oh, you're preaching yeah, to the choir. <laughs> yeah, Wes knows all about this. I've got, <laughs> I'll put it this way. I've got about 9,000 Twitter followers, and 5,000 of them have podcasts. Yeah, that's probably right. Yeah. yeah, and I don't have anywhere near that many Twitter followers, but I, I will say, and this is an, with an all sincerity, Chad, Chad's my longest relationship. Chad and I met in college. We're, we're like brothers in the sense of that we fight and love each other, but we're more apt to argue than James and I or Chad. And shut I. up! See, yeah. he's, he's a bald son of a bitch. You can't get him to shut the hell up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then James and I met at Moorhead when we were working there. We were introduced so. Basically, Wes and Chris, we then met, I knew Haley. I knew was friends with Haley's dad. I get to hang out with my best friends once a week yeah. and talk about shit that I'd already be talking about. And now you all get to listen in or get to watch what people were already asking to be invited yeah. over and drink and watch in the first place, it's right? A, yeah. And, yeah. I mean, no offense, but people yeah. always wanted to be invited over. And, you know, when we started, it was literally just us three. Wanting to talk about pop, things that interested us, uh, topics that we thought we might like to share to get movies out there that people may not have heard of. And then through Scarefest, yeah. um, we met somebody who kind of basically altered the course of the Bonehead Humor for the Bonehead Humor podcast and it's strong. Um, yeah, and I want to go ahead really quick because I don't, there's two other people that don't get enough credit. Well, I'll say three, but. In particular. Even though they're pains in the butt, if Kim and Amber are listening, first of <laughs> all, you suck. God, you're sensitive. But I, I mean, I, we can't thank them enough because they yeah. went out of their way to get us that Kane Hodder interview and for our, kind of our first celebrity. And we really have to say thank you to them. And yes. then Brandon. Brandon was just great. Brandon was about being supportive. And now we'll make it so Scarefest, uh, people always ask me which one I prefer, and I've, I've never lied. I always say, well, Comic-Con gets me more attention than Scarefest. That's it. Oh, yeah, but, and, and, and once uh, we started doing the, once we had Kane Otter, I guess, once Nick Strong took the time to sit down and talk to us, he introduced us to Andre Ellingson, who does the effects on the kind of classy and movies and all these other and we've been able to reach out and get a lot of people to work on this tell us the reason nobody's so much so that we're pulling the actually there's four episodes you guys have not seen and all of our interviews with these people behind the scenes like I said you can listen to tons of podcasts I won't call out any pictures but you know all you hear is the director that's all you ever hear stories from. That is one little piece. If you're actually in, if you're actually in the company, there are people behind the scenes. Thank you. I mean, yeah, the actors get some, some credit, but there are tons of people behind the scenes, and that's me like uh, just getting those people to sit down. And we, in the short time that we're doing, so many. Of you. And that's not to say that we won't interview. We get director interview 
coming out. Yes. Well, yeah, William Malone, the director of the House of Public Company, making some of the best of the trip. And that's a hey, Scarefest Radio. We have in and out as the guest which was really a key for us. If you guys know anything about me, I was a major public director for an hour and a half of the line. Yeah, he said, Yeah, we ended up with video. We got video of it and everything. Are you guys, uh, either one of you kind of nerdy? Do you know what the big plan is? We're, we're actually, we're, 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 we're getting a lot of, um, uh, mic problems but uh, we're going to take a commercial break and then i'm going to turn it over to chris just so everybody can see that it's for once it's not my computer everybody you're listening to scarefest radio do you feel lost in life do you seem to be stuck in emotions that are not yours is your home not the sanctuary it should be contact spirit mechanics where they take a team approach to your metaphysical and spiritual problems. Spirit Mechanic specializes in aura cleansing, stone attunement, attachment removal, and house cleansings. Spirit Mechanics tailors their approach to your individual spiritual path and needs. Find them every month at Lexington, Kentucky's Mystical Fair, mysticalfairlex.com or on Facebook by searching Spirit Mechanics, that's M-E-C-H-A-N-I-X. Spirit Mechanics, for your spiritual health and well-being. Investigate the Mineral Springs Hotel with Elizabeth Saint of Ghost of Shepherdstown. Saturday, March 24th, join us in Alton, Illinois for a -a one-of-a-kind paranormal investigation of the Mineral Springs Hotel. Elizabeth Saint is teaming up with Cody Chris Sutton, Aaron and Nick of Ghost Crier, and myself to lead you on your tour of this famously haunted location. Will you find the artist that haunts the old hotel bar? Will you experience the Jasmine Lady? Or maybe the tragic tales that surround the old swimming pool will reveal their haunted history to you. It will be a night to remember. March 24th, Alton, Illinois. Investigate Mineral Springs with Elizabeth Saint. Go to CoyoteChrisNow.com. And welcome back to Scarefest Radio. Chris, over to you. Okay, Haley. I see you sitting there quietly in the front row, and I'm not letting you off the hook. Now, so basically, you're hanging out with a friend of your dad's and two of his buddies. <laughs> yeah. Okay, that sounds kind of creepy. You know. This is the least creepy it's ever sounded, actually. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What? Well, okay, so... The line <laughs> <laughs> so how does how, this grow up? How does this happen? How does how does this happen for you? Um, well, Joe and I kind of coached out of class together at UK. I yeah, was his peer instructor. Years. Three years. And I requested him voluntarily for three years. You brought this on yourself. I did. I did. And he said, "Hey, we want to do a podcast. You want to help us?" It didn't occur to me how many people he asked beforehand who said no. <laughs> <laughs> Turned him down. And I said, yes. So here I am. <laughs> So, I mean, what's it like? I mean, because basically you have a comedy troupe here. Okay. We're going to get to more of that in a second. Um, what, what, I mean, I, I know you, I know you add to it. I know you're not just a producer. I, I don't get, I don't get that. I get there's more to it than that. What is your role besides that? What do you, what do you, how do you help this whole thing come together? I think of it more as. I like the cameras. I think of myself more as their director. So I'm in charge of making sure the cameras are running, that we're recording. It's really important to me that we actually record what we do. And then stringing it all together at the end and putting some graphics with it. So you make sure you make sure everything gets done right because those guys will screw up and forget about it, right? Somebody once asked me what it was like working with them. And I said, it's like herding cats, except cats are easier. <laughs> Getting all three of them together at one time, on time. Yeah. Sounds like Wes's house where the cats are all over the place. <laughs> yeah, that's, 
Now you get okay. So <laughs> having done some some theater work myself, and I'm not any accomplished actor anything like that. But I, I have done comedy, I've done musicals, I've done drama. To me, comedy is the hardest thing to do. And now we, you guys are, are together doing it a lot. How do you, I mean, do you guys, you obviously have to get along, but what makes that work? Because comedy, you're playing off of each other without pissing each other off all the time. Um, how do you guys make that work all the time? Okay, I didn't say never. I said all the time. But how, do, how do you guys make that work? Well, we are, argue a lot. And yeah. we actually don't see eye to eye on very few things. I, honestly, I'll, I'll let you in on one argument. And it was that we were intentionally, we're just going to do a podcast. It was just going to be audio. And then when, when we set up the camera that day, we thought well, we, we actually threw out the first one and started again. We might have had a few. Yeah. Literally, mm-hmm. the first episode, you see me in my PJs like I came here like okay we're recording this that's great I'm just gonna run over there I'm wearing my the shorts that I sleep in and a t-shirt and we recorded the episode and next thing you know we're posting it on YouTube and, <laughs> you're hugging the pillow the yeah, yeah I'm the pillow the whole time but and I got a few comments about that pillow Hello. and me and that pillow have a very personal friendship and I would like <laughs> you to keep your noses out of it <laughs> No problem, we we, I mean, if it was, I mean, if it were Birthday left up, is a manly pillow. <laughs> if it were left up to you, we never would have done a video. But, no, you know the other. But thing. the video version is just as popular, if not more popular, than the audio version. But, right. And the other side of it, talking about the comedy, we don't even agree on what's funny. No. Uh, no. I, Chad is much more, shall we say, body humor. Yeah. Uh, no, I like fart jokes. That would be the <laughs> joke. I know. Oh, God. Uh, anyway, uh, and I am. I, I like wordplay. Oh, and he's a wordy son of a bitch. Mm-hmm. And stuff like that. And Joe likes things that aren't funny. <laughs> <laughs> well, see, but what you guys are saying, nothing should work here at all. But it does. Okay, so. Well, thank you. I know, yeah, <laughs> honestly, I, to me, it's just our affection for one another probably is probably what it is. The only reason. We have several other friends that we hang out with a couple times a year. And we've had people... I wouldn't say beg, but request to come on this particular trip, correct? Yeah. And I'm not, no shit. And just we, to watch us. Just to watch us. And we'll, no, you know, sorry, but it's just the <laughs> five or six of us who do it. And it's, it's a lot of fun. I mean, it's one of those where you, where you just laugh so much that you, that it hurts. And I, I think it's the affection that we have for one another <clears throat> because we get really mad at one another at different times because mm-hmm. we have different opinions and it's the difference between this and the movies probably is, is that <clears throat> I'm sorry, my voice is going, is that it's really, I'm 25%. So I don't get to overshadow everybody else, especially right. when it comes to voting. So if we vote one way, for example, <clears throat> we never argued about bonehead. So Chad and I, or Chad did a short comedy sketch thing when we we're in college called bonehead. And that's where the name came from. And when we were going to do this, it was always going to be bonehead. Problem is, is there's 4,000 things out there called bonehead. Uh-huh. And we couldn't just do bonehead. So it was going to be bonehead radio. It was going to be bonehead this. It was going to be bonehead that. And finally, we decided on bonehead humor. And I don't know that any of us were particularly happy with it, but it's what won out. Does that uh-huh. make sense? It's yeah. what was available on Twitter. <laughs> it was available on Twitter, yeah. Uh, and we are a LLC, so it was available statewide. It was available for us to register as a business, all that stuff. Yeah. That's why Wes is I Hunt Ghost, because that's what was, what was available on Twitter, I think. Um, <laughs> that's when there's 9,000 followers. Um, but, yeah, you, you guys, would, obviously, you make it work because you got different ideas of what's funny. You know, that's what makes what made Monty Python so good is that, you know, because they all I think they all had different visions, but it all happened to work together. And well, you got to. I think that I think that's so important to have that diversity. Yeah. If you were able to. And by the way, if you're in town for Comic-Con or Scarefest, by all means, stop by. I'll show you the basement. Mm-hmm. If you're able to look and we're pan over here. <laughs> Monty Python. Posted. By the way, that's that's the creepiest line ever said on Scarecrow. Stop by, I'll show you the basement. He's got a crawl space. Eh. Yeah. Casey, all he had was a crawl space. I got a whole basement. <laughs> so it's Monty Python. I think my big three influ- biggest three influ- influences when it comes to humor are Mel Brooks, Monty Python, and George Carlin. Okay, uh, I don't know for years. That, that's pretty much 
Is that yours too, yeah. James? Uh, Monty Python, definitely. Um, but then, like, Mitch Hedberg, people who did a lot of word play, and the Marx Brothers. I still love yeah. the Marx Brothers. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so. And we all love Mitch Hedberg and Marx. So we all love the same people, at just probably different yeah. our, as our favorites. I, I think I think uh, George Carlin was the greatest comedian of all time. Some people say Richard Pryor. Some people say, um, who's another one? Me. Ooh. Ooh. Hey. Too soon. Too, too soon. soon. I dagged that too soon. Oh, man. <laughs> what? Bill Cosby isn't funny anymore? We're going to get letters <laughs> now. I did not. Oh, man. Yeah, you're going to get letters. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, you get letters. We get letters. Yeah. I really like Letterman, too. Letterman, letters. Can yeah. think about yeah. it. Yeah, so, I mean, yeah, Bill Cosby, Mel. Uh, Bill Cosby. <laughs> <laughs> I did it. <laughs> you screwed Monty Cosby. Python, Mel Brooks, and George Carlin for me. I would be the three biggest influences. I mean, if I could, whatever that is, because I think the three different, they're probably all share one thing in common, including the Marx Brothers, including Mitch Hedberg, including other... The all, ukulele. No. They're all very intelligent. Mm-hmm. Right. All it's all smart. And if you ever listen to us, I know we say a lot of stupid things, but if you look between some jokes, we throw some obscure things in there as well. And, and we try to be fairly intelligent, even though it probably sounds stupid. Well, I think that's one of the things. You can be true to yourself. Yeah. You know, you got to be, you got to you can't just, you can't cater to everybody. And a lot of the guys you're talking about, Carlin and these guys, they were people, a lot of people didn't like them because they were too smart. You know, the, the, the people that went over their heads, they didn't get it. You got to be you. And that's what matters the most. That's what makes it authentic is not, you're not pandering to somebody else. You're being who you true to yourself. Carlin had short hair in the 60s and was playing mm-hmm. Vegas and making millions, you know, and he said, I can't do this anymore. i got to be me and grew his hair out and went blue. And blue, for any of you kids out there listening, is what they started using the dirty language, right? So Red Fox stuff. Mm-hmm. Red yeah. Fox stuff. You know, i got to be blue. i got to be me. And then he – and I think that's probably another reason why I like him is, is that you can actually look at a career and, and he grew. And – Maybe his best stand-up is actually his stand-up about death, his last HBO special, right before he died, that was all about death. Mm-hmm. I, yeah. I personally think his best stand-up is You Are All Diseased. But well, See, I don't agree with that. I think it's I, all I, the last one's probably it. I, I that think, or the uh, Carnegie Hall one. I think you're right, though, <clears> in that, and it's, it's something that I always say, and using Carlin as an example, I love Carlin's books, but Carlin's books aren't funny. Unless you read them in Carlin's voice. Voice, uh uh-huh. It's having that very unique voice. And I think that's one of the things that does attract some people to our podcast is, you know, we have an entire episode about why ghosts are jerks. Like in every horror movie, why is there not one ghost just showing up going, I'm not with those guys. I'm, I'm, I came here to make you pancakes this morning. Why can't we all get along and live <laughs> in the state? Yeah, like, why, why do we have so, to be, why does it got to be all poltergeist and shit? Yeah, yeah. so, you know, and we, 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 Silly, we do silly things like ask those questions, but then we go, well, wait a second. There's got to be a few movies, and we talk about those movies that where ghosts are actually helpful or where <clears> they're <throat> doing something else. Yeah. Because yeah, there's, it's easy to talk about, um, and we love these movies, Nightmare on Elm Street and all these other films. But at the end of the day, also, what, what's your favorite ghost movie with uh, Sherman Hemsley? Oh, Ghost Fever. Ghost Fever, where there's these nice southern bell ghosts that just want to sleep with Sherman Hemsley. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that had to be a, had to be a fantasy there. <laughs> oh my oh, god, man. we can pull out some obscure shit so, here. So yeah, and I mean, I think that's what kind of does separate us because there's tons of, and we would admire these. Uh, there's a podcast called uh, the Horror Honeys, and it's women talking about horror. We admire what they do, but we uh-huh. didn't want to limit ourselves just to that. No, uh, we wanted to be able to jump over and talk about time travel or talk to whatever guest wanted to come on the show, and that's. Mm-hmm. I don't even know that horror is my favorite genre. I mean, it's up there, but I mean, well, horror and, I, and comedy I, I and science think... fiction. I, I love a good movie. I love a good story. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, we had a good talk about science fiction last when you guys were on last year, Joe yeah. and James. We had, we had and so um, we might get to that back to that later on. But I think right now it's time to, for our next commercial break. Everybody, you're listening to Scarefest Radio. When we come back, we will do our three day pass giveaway on. The Facebook group. That is the Scarefest Celebrity Horror Fandom and Halloween Expo group page. The group page. It'll be under the banner that I posted right before showtime, right at the top of the page. (laughs) 
Coyote Chris Sutton. Shamanism. Spiritual advisement. Paranormal investigations. Inspirational presentations. Bringing light to the darkest places for over 20 years. Go to coyotechris.com to learn more. Everyone knows that the Scarefest has the best fans and that they love all things creative and unique. The Scarefest is now taking vendor applications. The Scarefest is the largest independently owned celebrity horror and Halloween expo in the U.S. and 2018 marks our 11th anniversary. Find out what our long-term vendors and artists already know. The Scarefest is the place to display your unique item. Email vendors at thescarefest.com for more information. Sign up before March 31st and have your link added to thescarefest.com vendor guide. Upgrade to featured vendor status and get ad placement in our program plus social media shoutouts. The Scarefest the place for your unique merchandise. And welcome back to Scarefest Radio tonight. We're talking to Bonehead Humor, Joe Lewis, Chad Jennings, James Thomas, and Haley Sawyers. Okay, the contest on the Facebook group for the Scarefest Celebrity Horror Phantom and Halloween Expo so that you know you're at the right place. Comment <coughs> on tonight's banner. Let me show you my basement. Let me show you my basement. <laughs> that will be tonight's um, phrase. First person that I see post that will win a three-day pass to Scarefest 11, Scarefest 2018. Now, I do want to... Um, <laughs> I'm 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 gonna pin Joe down here. Um Giggity. You, I was hoping he don't would. You, you you know Joe's a special person because every time he actually sees me face to face, the first thing he tells me is, I'm sorry about what I said to your wife. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. It's true. I mean I am and I'm not. <laughs> Where's she at? Is she there? Oh yeah, she she she's here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to see the sultry vixen. Uh, <laughs> she she as we were telling them before the show, she is here in her married lingerie, her married lingerie, basically sweatpants and a t-shirt. Um, well, she didn't wear any of that on these pictures. And the on t-shirt my phone. and the t-shirt says <laughs> "Screw Joe." <laughs> Literally. Ah, oh, oh, I didn't even mean did. it that way. Oh. It. yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah, it did. Uh, you know what? She didn't know she was a chubby chaser, but I assure you, sir, she is. Well, I you're just easier oh, to catch, Joe. Yeah, and then she true. bounces right off. <laughs> Fat people are hard to kidnap. Uh, you gotta have it, 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 nowadays, back in the old days when trunks were big, it was different. Um question to each of you now. One by That's one, true. I'm gonna pin you down one by one. Since a lot of your show is about movies and movie trivia and stuff, I want yeah. each of you to give you a heads up. I'm going to ask each of you one by one to pick the movie that you felt had the biggest influence, not your favorite movie necessarily, but what movie do you think influenced your youth the most? Oh, oh it's the same. Well, it might oh, be. Yeah. Start, start with you, Joe. Well, good. Well, I think we can do it all in unison because it's the same one. One, two, three. Ghostbusters. Ghostbusters, yeah. At uh, now Haley's going to be different because we're old men. <laughs> this creepy, yeah. And she's a young lass. So, <laughs> what's yours? It's kind of a toss-up, but this is going to be weird between Mulan and the Rocky Horror Picture. Yeah, that's weird. Yeah, so. yeah that's, yeah, that's, that's the same movie, right? <laughs> same thing. I'm, there's other. There are, yeah, I mean, there's other movies that influence me. I love Sam Raimi's my favorite director, all over John Carpenter. So, so The Evil Dead is Came to New York, The Thing. For me, um, I've mentioned this on the podcast. My introduction to movies is a little work. 
Um, I didn't start out with the graphics like the classics, like Joe just mentioned. I felt like I was reading. Uh, so, you know, you could say with me, it was at least two. <laughs> the best movies. The best movies. Uh, and, uh, you know, and the the only Star Wars movie that I thought I didn't realize was a trilogy until, again, I was a teenager, Return of the Jedi. <laughs> you know, I guess me outside of Ghost. But um, I, I like really odd. Okay, we didn't. Uh, the uh, FYI, when uh, uh, James was talking, the audio cut out completely. Uh, let's see. I'm going to go no ahead. Yeah, yeah, that's that's why James. Happens all the time. And we have a lot of followers on the show, and they do a hashtag of let James speak because we always interrupt James on the show. Uh, but no, Seventh Seal is one of my favorite films as far as when I was a little bit older. Uh, uh, Bergman, Seventh Seal, about where death is playing chess with the knight. With Demi Moore. No, it is not with Demi Moore. That's the seventh sign, you hill gang. <coughs> anyway. Oh, Chad. And hold on. Yeah, and, and and later on, I love Orson Welles. I love Citizen Kane, Touch of Evil. I love yeah. Hitchcock. I, uh, Joe I, will take any touch he can get. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, I. I love William Wyler. The Best Years of Our Lives is one of my favorite films of all time. I mean, you know what? I, it just runs the gamut. I love uh, the Philadelphia story. I was just going to say, with me, um, you know, I mentioned those. Those were, like, early on in my childhood. Like, growing up, as I got older and my taste got more refined. <laughs> <laughs> you um, love Barney and Friends. Uh, mm-hmm. two, two of my biggest movies that influenced me was Who Trained Roger Rabbit and Ed Wood. Those are, those are probably, next to Ghostbusters, are my three all time. I also love Network, Godfather, uh, just producer. You realize this all started out because I asked for one freaking movie. One freaking movie. Yeah. Okay, uh, we do have winners. I'm going to do it again, people. The people that are playing uh, are coming out too close to call. My, <coughs> when my screen refreshed, I had two winners. I'm giving away two passes. Um, Layla can kiss my butt. Um, Katie Ralston and Mandy Ramey. You are both winners tonight. Katie Ralston and Mandy Ramey. I am give, awarding you both tickets. Basically, I'll be in contact with you soon to get your email address, and we will send you a uh, email that you just um, click a link and download to your phone or whatever the hell you want to do. You can print it out or whatever. But and for bonehead humor, you can get a half pack of ramen noodles, and you get to subscribe to YouTube and iTunes. Yeah. Hey, what were their names again? R- Ramy and who? Katie, <laughs> Katie Ralston and Mandy Ramy. All right, Katie and Mandy. If you'll go subscribe to iTunes and YouTube, Bonehead Humor, we will send you a gift as well. Yeah. No I'll shit. Seriously, go do it right now. You will be twice the winners. What if they don't have an iPhone? I don't give a shit. Go get one. They don't have to have an iPhone. <laughs> you, they could go to iTunes on YouTube, the web. I'd say, or get it on YouTube. <laughs> so, yes. So, you're going to force them to open a new freaking account and you give away all anything. their personal information. Yes, mm-hmm. you government sicko. <laughs> <laughs> the government already put a chip in my brain. We're covered. Yeah, no, seriously. Mm, ruffles. I'm just trying to be nice to uh, Patty and Selma. What were their names again? <laughs> Katie Ralston and Mandy Ramey. In case you had trouble hearing that, Katie and Mandy, if you subscribe to Bonehead Humor on YouTube and subscribe to Bonehead Humor on the iTunes, screw you and your Android phone, um, you can... You, you can... they. Yeah. They're they're giving they're, they're giving you something. I don't even remember what it was now. Uh, Chris, over to you. Split. We cheap. We will. This is something we promise. This is an Android phone right in my hand right here. Who said screw Android, Wesley Forsyth? Do you have iTunes right. on it? Do you have iTunes on it? No, I just watch them on YouTube. I don't give a shit. Yeah, that's right. Subscribe yeah. to YouTube. YouTube works as well. Oh Ooh. my God, Wes! I was trying to do something for your viewers to be nice, and we you did. had to ruin it. And we is have... this what you do at Thanksgiving? Is Anita okay? <laughs> do I need to come hug her? She needs to be embraced tightly. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on, uh, we 
We've actually been attending Scarefest since it began. I've been to every Scarefest. So, I have been to every single Scarefest. We went as fans for years till we till we kind of came friendly with Patty. So one of the things that once we, again was Amber Truax, by the way. Thank you, the, Amber. One of the things that we do have that we we will uh, give to people who subscribe, select people who subscribe. Uh, we actually have some swag from the first year of Scarefest. Yeah. Um, and so if you're a big Scarefest fan, you want to know what it was like that first year, we can send you some stuff. I'm yeah. not giving away my shirt. No, <laughs> Please your shirt. leave your shirt on, Chad, <laughs> for all of us. So you guys got like coasters and pencils and stuff like that to give away? or I, know where, <laughs> I wouldn't have the first one, I, you know. <laughs> actually, Nail we got, files. <laughs> we got suckered into moving some of Brandon and Nicole's shit around in there. Uh, think about a, a, what was it, two weeks ago? Yeah, and yeah. they had a boxes. Yeah, we'll, we'll tell you later about it. <laughs> but one of the things that we do have that's really nice: if you did attend the first year, and if you have the Friday the Thirteenth, uh, there was a DVD version that came out. That part of it was recorded at Scarefest, which you can see us in. We're yeah, in we're in the background. The features, yeah. Um, but it, they recorded at Scarefest with um, the cast. Basically, they did a cast reunion the first year, mm-hmm. and we actually have um, a couple posters. So. Where Joe said we can send some stuff out, we actually have a cast reunion poster. Um, you're welcome. So, if you're listening to Scarefest Radio, because you listened, go subscribe to us on YouTube or iTunes. We'll go through the subscriber list, and we'll randomly pick people and send them something. Yeah, just message us your information or put it under the comments in one of the videos. Our last video, if you'd like. Okay. Excellent. Anyways. That is that. That's that's a wonderful gesture, guys. You guys are top shelf. You're top notch for offering that to the scans, fans of Scarefest. You, you will not find any more loyal fans around the United States than the folks that come to Lexington, Kentucky in September. So good for yeah. you guys. We we yeah. came from there, and that's like we do have a sincere love for Scarefest. And Joe said it earlier, but it is family. Yeah, it's yeah family. it is. That's true. I mean, this it's will be my sixth. Good, I think this. Yeah, this will be my sixth this year, and I just I wouldn't can't think about not going so anymore. Um, we talked about you guys talked about your favorite movies earlier. I want because I think to myself, I, I think about certain movies like, um, and I think of scenes, and I'll go back on YouTube and I'll look up these scenes. I still roll, even though I've seen them a hundred times. Each or one of you pick out a scene from a movie that, that to this day it still makes you laugh, even though no matter how many times you've seen it. Mm-hmm. So, Joe. Mm-hmm. Start with me? Yeah. Oh, God. Do you have to? Let's start with somebody else Here. because I have a half a dozen. I'll okay. go. Okay. Um, James. There is a – it's kind of a remake of the Marx Brothers film. It's a film called Brain Donors with John Turturro. Uh, it was directed by the um, – Fairly Brothers? No, no. no, no it was directed um, by Charles uh, Martin Smith. He yeah. was an actor. Mm-hmm. Anyway, it, it was done as a remake. It's called Brain Donors. In some markets, it was lame duck. Title doesn't matter, but there is an entire scene where it is riffing on the Marx Brothers, and John Turturro plays kind He's of a gonna do the fucking Marx scene, character. isn't he? He's going to do the whole scene right uh, now. No, there's, there's <laughs> a, the scene that I like um, is uh, where they're talking about how there's no way they can keep up with everybody else. Haley, did you bring the pistol? And they put out an entire. Um, y'all are killing me. You know? Will you hold that over my head? Oh no. I got- I got one if you need one, Joe. <laughs> oh, there we go. <laughs> Next time you go first, Joe. Uh, no, but it's it's it, they do do an entire riff on it, and there's an entire line where it, you know, that spells cash with a capital K. You need to go back to school. Why I hated teaching. That back and forth wordplay, and that goes on for about three minutes, and I love it. Go ahead. <laughs> I have to. I've not seen that to watch that. So for me, I'm gonna. I want to probably steal what Joe was going to say. I mean, any scene from Blazing Saddles. Uh Told you. (laughs) But in particular, the one scene that gets me is when um, Gene Wilder and and Cleveland Little are dressed up in in the Klan outfits. And they're going up in line. And and Cleveland Little, you know, says, oh, look, it's just dirt. It washes off and he turns around. I told you to wash up after weekly. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, that scene still that scene still makes me laugh. He stole. I was going to say Blazing Saddles too. I think Blazing Saddles is one of those movies that can't be made today. Um, I'll, no. I'll, I'll give a shout out to uh, anything in Airplane, anything in Blazing Saddles. 
Um, Surely you don't mean Airplane. Okay, hold on. Here's a movie that's not necessarily a comedy, but Hitchcock was a very funny guy. In North by Northwest, when Cary Grant, he has this whole soliloquy about there's three bartenders, two ex-wives, and blah, 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 who, who will miss me if I'm dead, and, it was, and who, if I play dead. And I just, I love it. I love it. I can watch it over and over and over. And because James Mason has your next part, and I'm sure you'll be quite convincing at it. I just love that line. It's perfect. It's just perfect. Perfect. Sorry. That's probably a little bit more obscure for some of your viewers. Anyway. And his other favorite comedy is Silence of the Lambs. <laughs> yeah. Get the Buffalo Bill scene. No, just Ross Clarice. Okay. He loves the dance scene. Yeah, well, it we, makes him whimsy. Let him speak. <laughs> uh, anything from the movie Clue? Oh, I love that no, movie. Clue's good. Really? Yes. That was um. Who was in that? Um. Do do do. Sam Curry. Christopher yeah, Lord. Tim Curry. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, and that's one of those movies you never heard a lot about. It was out there, and I never. I, I'm, I'm sure I've watched parts of it, but I've never seen the whole thing. Um, well, if I go back to watch something, it's always something from from Life of Brian. Oh yeah. Um, and I mean, and it, very naughty boy. Yeah, he is. <laughs> he's not the Messiah. He's a very naughty boy. I, I feel yeah. that way to you about, I mean, Holy Grail. I can watch, yeah. we, 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 yeah. we went to John Cleese back in the fall to see John Cleese live. And we saw John Cleese and Eric Otto a couple of years ago together on the stage. And, and they did um, Holy Grail beforehand. It's just, it's just, it's, it'll always be funny. Yeah, it, yeah. it, it is. It's, um, I say I was a Latin student in high school. And yeah. so when, when Brian's writing, you know, Romans go home on the walls and John Cleese comes up with a sword and makes him do all the conjugate yeah. the verb and all that. I mean, I just thought that was fire in hell because I, I had a Latin yeah. teacher who's like that. And it's just like it just made that just I, I can still. And here's how laugh. it ends. If it's, if it's not done by morning, I'm coming and cutting your balls off. <laughs> <laughs> <All right. laughs> oh, goodness. Yeah, that's, there's just so much good stuff out there. There um, is. There's there is. A plethora. I mean, I thought of thirty, probably thirty. Well, now, see, now I'm sitting here thinking about Young Frankenstein. Should I watch oh, yeah. Young Frankenstein? Because that's that's the other one that I quote a lot. Yeah, yeah, I quote Silent Movie a lot. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I wish you quoted it more. Yeah, you need to quote it more. Yeah. Okay, so with that being said, now of the stuff you guys have done, what's your favorites? Each one of you. You mean of the podcast? Yeah, or anything, anything, your any video, audio, whatever. Um, I know mine. Ooh, go. Yeah. I uh, as I, as far as a podcast goes, I I don't know honestly, and this is probably true. And I'd like to ask Wes or you, Chris, uh, both of you. Do you remember the episode two weeks after you did it? Mm-mm. I don't either. So people ask these questions, and now I know what it's like to have probably Shatner has been answering these questions for 50 years. I don't know. I did that 50 years ago. Do you remember yeah. what you saw at the theater last week? No. So, I, but I, my favorite thing is a little movie we did back in 2003. Yeah. yeah it's called Reminiscent, the, the silent film. It was, the idea was before I married her, uh, my wife, Christy's idea. And it's a, it's a silent film. It's a black and white in the color about a guy at the end of his life remembering women in his life there's no dialogue and it's the only thing i ever did that i thought was art and mm-hmm. dad edited it we wrote it together and it's uh it's it's the best thing we ever did in my opinion mm-hmm. but and fortunately like wells i did it we did it at 25 yeah <laughs> <laughs> and, never, and, then you <laughs> and, and never ever did i think we did anything much better than that mm-hmm. cool so uh with me with the podcast um you know, one of the, the ep- I remember certain episodes. Um, I remember them all. But, um, Do you really? Yeah. <laughs> no. Um, yes. the, um, the one, um, I'm going to categorize two. Um, well, one of my, I'll just focus on one because the one of my favorites hasn't even aired yet. Oh, whatever. Talking to you, make, make, no, 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 no. <laughs> just keep going. Um, see how annoying it is? Sons of bitches. <laughs> but the, the one that we did personally was, uh, I believe it's episode 24. Joe loves the smell of ginger cream. Was that one of our episodes. That's where we uh, talked about uh, classic TV shows that we think are overrated. Yeah, that one's a good. I one. felt like we were we were we were really bouncing off each other really well on that one, and watching these, and then we didn't discuss it prior to the show, and I purposefully didn't. So when I went off on a tangent about the Andy Griffith show sucking, 
I have to let these two jump all over me. Still wrong. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You took uh, one for the team, though, man. You know, you did the right, you did the right thing, and it made it really funny. You know, because they just got to pound the shit out of you. Yeah, because sometimes we'll talk. Sometimes we'll talk before the episode <laughs> about what we're going to say, and sometimes we don't. And sometimes we don't. And I feel like the times where we don't, where we don't know what each person is going to say. I feel like sometimes our episodes are a little. If better the happen. episode works for that, sometimes yeah. the topic doesn't. And yeah, sometimes, sometimes you have a guest and you just. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, um, and then guest wise, um, man, uh, Mixtron is always going to be a special, oh, yeah. special place for me in terms of because we wouldn't have to the success that we have without, uh, Mick, with, Strong. without Mick. Mm-hmm. Um, which goes back to Scarefest. Which, uh, if you don't, Mick Strawn is a production, he was a production designer in Hollywood. He worked on uh, Nightmare on Elm Street 3 and 4, yeah. Critters 2, Critters 2, Blade. Um, Break into Electric, Electric Boogaloo. Boogaloo. He's just a fascinating guy. Yeah, yeah. and he has so many famous <laughs> stories. And, and um, he, he led us into more people, and then that inspired us to go seek out other people. And we've had some success so far. So, yeah. Um, and he does have his own uh, podcast as well, Dream Warrior View, where he... <laughs> we still have an answer. You have an answer. Yeah, yeah. go ahead. We'll, we'll, we'll kiss Mick's dick. So, yeah, that, that, those are my answers. Sorry. I've turned into James. I want to die. One of the... <laughs> that you do know what it's like to be me. Um, for me, actually, and you can watch... Uh, it's the last short film we did. It's called Murder Virgin. Um it didn't come together exactly like we wanted it to, but the reason it's one of my favorite things we did, it is uploaded on YouTube. We have, uh, it did get to play at some film festivals. Yeah, we had more success of that at film festivals but than any other thing. the reason I like it is, it's another one where all three of our voices show up, and the plot to it is this very small young lady um, decides that she's going to become a serial killer, and she's going to start by killing her first victim. She's got to get through it. She's a murder virgin. Mm-hmm. And she sadly decides that she's going to try to kill a 300 plus pound guy. Can't figure out how to dispose of the body, but she also can't get enough force to actually kill yeah. him. And it's literally about them going back and forth. Like, it's a, a dark show. comedy about <laughs> Yeah. Cool. You don't really root for either one of them because you both... But that's probably where we went wrong. Well, nobody to but what I loved about that was it all came about because Joe had the idea. Correct me if I'm wrong, but yeah. he was sitting there thinking about what if, and it ended up being the actress we used. What if she tried to kill him? Yeah. Just her, name was, her name was her name is Joe too. Joe Bell's. And, 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 and thank you for dragging my large ass up the stairs. So hey, leave me your favor. Have the episodes we've done. We have to give Kim Boggle. Yeah, Kim Boggle oh, yeah, was Kim. a lot of fun. Yeah. Kim Boggle is our first guest, right? Yep. And, and Kim Boggle. You know, it's the thing, too, uh, with our episode. It's weird how we end up connecting all the other episodes because with Kim Boggle, as soon as we found out Kim Boggle, as soon as they told Kim Boggle was going to be on it, I was like, ooh, I got to talk about Witch Boy. And then, <laughs> and then we get Mick Strawn, who worked on oh, Witch Boy. <laughs> I, I think I think my favorite was probably the last one, the last one Chris Alexander. The last one, you know. Oh yeah, but I nobody do. watched. But you know, I, I do go back to, and there's certain things. It's hard, it's like picking a favorite kid in some way. Cool. Anyway, we went too far. Sorry. Go ahead. That's all right, Haley. What about you? Probably the episode with Kim Boggle would be my favorite with the guest because nobody else said that. Copy all of your answers. Oh, well, now Boggle's going to get a big head now after hearing all this. Uh, uh, Ken, uh, Ken's been very supportive. Yes. I mean, Amber. No, and, 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 and I love Ken. Don't get me wrong. Ken's my friend. And I love Ken. I'm just teasing. No, him. no, he's a dick. But he, <laughs> he, and now we're he's off just, the air. We, we roasted him <laughs> in his birthday party. I mean, he's a dick, but he's 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 just a charismatic bastard. I mean, he really is. is. And I always think that I could rule a room, but I think Ken's got me beat hands down. Yep, he's great. Wes, back to you. I know you've been been making hints and stuff at me, so yeah, I've um, been in the I've been in the shout shouting in the chat room that it's time for commercial. Last I commercial looked in break. The chat room, didn't see anything in there? I said it twice, and I and there were witnesses. So <laughs> we'll be right back. Tarot reading. The very idea intimidates many people. 
life guidance from beyond, mystic hokum, messages straight from the devil himself. Eh, who the hell knows? With a really bad tarot card reading, you don't have to worry about any of that. My really bad tarot card readings are fun yet insightful. Spewing pop psychology, I bullshit my way through it straight from what many might call a warped mind. I have no training. I have no real marketable talent. Hell, I haven't even read the instructions. But they're cheap, they're fun, and as I always say, I might be wrong. Find my really bad tarot card readings at paranormalfiller.com. Are you considered an authority in your field? Do you have a knowledge of your passion that you want to share? The Scarefest is now taking speaker and seminar applications. Everyone knows that The Scarefest is America's premier horror and paranormal convention. What you may not know is that in addition to their celebrities and world famous <laughs> vendor exposition, they also schedule a wide range of seminars and panels all three days of the event. They are always looking for speakers that go beyond the typical howl to ghost hunt and push the limits of the imagination. Ufology, cryptozoology, serial killers, movie magic, spirituality and beyond, tales of the bizarre and investigations of the unknown. To be a part of an event that you will always remember, request your application now. Email speakers at thescarefest.com And we're back with the last few minutes of Scarefest Radio. Uh, we ran a little long there, but so we're going to knock this out. Uh, congratulations to Kelly Ralston and Mandy Ramey for winning our three-day passes tonight. Uh, did The one thing I didn't get to, Joe, I understand you're yeah. going to be moderating for Chuck Norris at Lexington Comic Con. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You comedian Chuck Norris. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You have to ask him. You have to ask him. Do your tears actually cure cancer? Star of Two Wong Fu. Thanks for everything, Julie Newmar. Chuck Norris. <laughs> um, I honestly, I want to make about a half a dozen jokes, and I want to tell you, something, but I actually can't talk about Chuck Norris. <laughs> Uh, you can ask me, Wes. You could have asked me about everyone else that I will be moderating for Comic Con. That's the one I can't really talk. About. Priscilla, Queen of the Deserts, Chuck Norris. <laughs> oh my God. I know, I know, he's a huge flaming liberal. Uh, he just hates guns. Henry the Angry Inch is hates Chuck Norris. Guns, hates guns. Guns. <laughs> but uh, I will. I promise there will not be anything political brought up in my moderating panel of Chuck. The bird cages. That's all I can say. I mean, there's. Um, it, it should be interesting. Hey, you never know. Everybody, this has been Scarefest Radio. We're at the end of the show. I want to thank everybody for listening. Sorry for the audio problems. This is going to happen sometimes with Skype, but um, we will we we will hopefully hopefully uh, just keep improving the product that you listen to every Friday night. Thanks everybody for tuning in. This has been Scarefest Radio.